Sunday, Russia observed a day of mourning after Friday's terror attack on a Moscow theater. At least 137 people lost their lives. The Islamic militant group ISIS claims responsibility for the deadly assault. Now U.S. officials are on alert for attacks against American targets abroad and at home. Dale Hurd reports. Four men accused of staging the Russian concert hall attack that killed more than 130 people appeared before a Moscow court showing signs of severe beatings. All four were charged with terrorism. One appeared to be barely conscious during Sunday's hearing. All of the men are from the Central Asian Republic of Tajikistan, which borders Afghanistan. The massacre happened in an auditorium on the outskirts of Moscow as a crowd gathered for a sold-out rock concert. People in their seats heard what sounded like fireworks. At least four men with automatic weapons had begun firing repeatedly into the crowd. Then they set the concert hall on fire. ISIS-K, the terror group's affiliate in Afghanistan, was quick to claim responsibility for the attack. The same group is responsible for the killing of 13 U.S. service members during the pullout from Afghanistan. Russian President Vladimir Putin claims the men were headed to Ukraine, where persons there were preparing to let them cross the border. But Vice President Kamala Harris said that's not true. There is no whatsoever any evidence, and in fact, what we know to be the case is that ISIS-K is actually, um, by all accounts, responsible for what happened. What has U.S. leaders very concerned is the possibility that a similar terrorist massacre could happen here in the U.S. or against Americans overseas. And they'll do it here in the homeland. And it, we're very, I think we should be very concerned, as the FBI director confirmed to me, that there is a wing, there is a trafficking network out there that specializes in moving people. They do it for profit, moving people and migrants around the world, including across our southern border, who have links to ISIS. The head of U.S. Border Patrol, Jason Owens, was asked if he's concerned. Absolutely. That's, uh, that, you, you ask any law enforcement officer, especially somebody that works in border security, that is what keeps us up at night. And if we don't know who is coming into our country and we don't know what their intent is, that is a threat. And they're exploiting a vulnerability that's on our border right now. Former FBI Special Agent Eric Karen told CBN News he's especially concerned about America's ports, where Customs and Border Protection physically inspect only 3% of incoming containers. We have 328 ports of entry into America. They all have to be secure, and many of them are soft. Karen says last year there were over a thousand joint terrorism task force cases related to sleeper cells and terrorist threats in the U.S. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Definite cause for concern. Gordon? It's an absolute cause for concern. When you look at ISIS K, it's ISIS Khorasan, Islamic State Khorasan. It's a geographic area in, primarily in Afghanistan, and in the withdrawal from Afghanistan, uh, this group was allowed, uh, and I'll, I'll underline allowed, to now flourish. And in that, you can see these terrorist attacks. So our hearts go out to everyone who was involved in Russia, uh, all those victims. It, it, it's absolutely horrific, but that could also happen here because we are part one of their targets. Uh, we're, we're not just innocent bystanders. From their standpoint, we're a target. And that is throughout the Islamic world. 9-11 was part of an overall plan. And you see this ideology being repeated and repeated and repeated, that Israel is the little Satan, and guess who's the great Satan? The United States of America. So they will feel righteous in attacking us. They will, they've been indoctrinated in that. Now, when you look at our current foreign policy, you've got to scratch your head. Are, are we ha do we have any understanding of it? Do we have any understanding of the threat to our homeland posed by these groups? Uh, it seems that we don't. Why in, the, why in the world would you send $10 billion to Iran in the middle of the current conflict with Hamas, what the Houthis are doing against shipping, uh, you're rewarding them for state sponsorship of terror. They're the primary supplier of weapons to Hezbollah. You're rewarding them for launching rockets into uh, Israel. It, it, this makes no sense. 
Here's something else that won't make any sense. Guess who uh, said we're, we're going to support Russia in this attack? It's Hamas. Here's the statement they put out. We in the Islamic resistant movement, Hamas, condemn in the strongest terms the terrorist attack that targeted civilians in the Russian capital, Moscow, and left dozens dead and wounded. We extend our sincere condolences to the Russian leadership and people and to the families of the victims of this criminal attack. And we wish a speedy recovery to the injured. And we express our full solidarity with Russia, its people, and the families of the victims in this tragedy. What an incredible... <laughs> you, you, what, what universe they live in, is it okay to kill Jews? Is that what they're essentially saying? It's okay to launch October 7th, throw the whole world into turmoil, and, and somehow or other you're going to ex 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 express solidarity with Russia? This is, it, it's, it's crazy ideology. And in this crazy ideology, please stand for the truth. Thou shalt not kill. Let us adhere to that. Let's not have that be some wistful uh, hope in the future. Can we do it? Can we do it now? Can we stand against this incredible evil that seems to be spreading?